Thank you so much to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. For those of you who don't know, Babbel is the world's number one leading language learning app, and I've been using it for a couple of months now to learn French. With Babbel, there are so many engaging ways to learn. You can do 10 minute lessons that teach you so much more than just vocab. You can listen to podcasts to immerse yourself in the culture. You can even play games. These days, I've been using Babbel in the morning right after I wake up for about 15 minutes or so. Par quoi on commence? Les cartons ou les meubles? Hmm, je dirais les meubles to rewire some negative habits, to be more consistent with my learning, and to actually feel smarter. And this is something that I'm discovering with Babbel, and it's that learning a language stimulates the brain. Research has shown that it increases brain connectivity, which can explain why I feel more articulate, more awake after using Babbel. And that's a really new but exciting experience for me. If you would like to challenge your brain and learn a new language as well, then join Babbel now to get 65% off. That's less than $5 per month to learn a new language. Thanks so much, Babbel. And now, let's get into the video. Hi there, welcome to this video. Today, I'm going to be taking you through three collective readings for November and most of Scorpio season. And you're going to have these three groups to choose from, which is going to get grounded very soon and sit with the group that resonates the most in this moment. Now, if you're watching this outside of November, that is totally fine because there's a reason why you clicked on this video today. So stay tuned and listen to the messages that stand out to you because that is what you're meant to hear today. Now without further ado, I'm going to ring the sing bowl three times, which with each ring, I'd like you to take a deep breath in, complete exhale out, sink into your body, connect to your center, your heart. Really nice. Now continue to sink into your seat, relax into your body, and then you can take a look at the three groups before you. We have rose quartz for group one, clear quartz for group two, and Black Obsidian for group three. Allow your gaze to soften and just notice which group stands out to you. Which one are you feeling drawn towards? You don't have to think too hard. The first answer is always the correct one, so go with your impulse. 
And if none of them stand out to you, or all of them stand out to you, then maybe you're supposed to listen to all three messages. You're totally welcome to. So once you've chosen your group, you can go down to the timestamps below and click on your reading, and I'll see you over there. If you picked group one, rose quartz, then this reading is for you. So we're first going to shuffle the tarot deck, pull some tarot cards to piece together your story, what you're currently going through, and where you're going, and any advice or warnings that the cards have for you. Okay, so we're going to start at the very beginning with the first card that flew out for you. And this is the Hanged Man. It looks to me that you have been in a period of stagnancy and stillness and non-action. You may still be in this space currently, and that is totally fine. Now, although the name of this card sounds a little scary, the card is actually quite beautiful in my opinion. So you see how he is upside down? Well, he deliberately chose to get himself into this discomfort in an effort to reach enlightenment. So he deliberately chose to sacrifice comfort in order to grow, expand, and learn. He chose stillness and non-action above everything else in order to enlighten himself. And it seems to me that you have been in this space also. You have chosen stillness and non-action in order to gain more clarity and understanding about yourself and what you truly want and that's a great place to be in and a really amazing thing to do. It's a brave thing to do. Then you have the Fool. So it looks as though Spirit is wanting you to begin to take action again. This period of waiting and patience is over and you are being invited to tread forward into a new phase in your journey. And this can seem a little bit scary sometimes, especially when you have seized action for so long. So much fear of, of uncertainty can arise when we begin to take action again, when we begin to get out into the world again, and that fear is understandable. The spirit wants you to know that you are being guided. So you see, the fool, yes, he's ignorant, he doesn't know much, and he acknowledged the, the fact that he doesn't know much, and he chooses to move forward regardless. It's really close to a cliff, and if he takes another step, he might just fall off the cliff, but he has his trusty little dog, and this is a symbol for our intuition, our spirit guides, guardian angels, the spirits that are watching over us and protecting us and assisting us. So the dog is warning him, so he's not going to fall off the cliff. And the cards want to remind you the same within your situation that it's good to acknowledge this fear of uncertainty and that you may not know what you're getting yourself into, but 
that's okay, you can still move forward. You can trust that you're being guided and that there is assistance even though it can't be seen by the naked eye. Also want to say that with each step you build momentum and confidence so you have to keep that in mind as well. You know, you're not always going to be fearful and uncertain. At a certain point, you develop enough confidence and trust in yourself to keep going. So it's just a matter of taking the first couple of steps until you feel that in yourself. Next, you have the Knight of Wands, and this can be taken in two ways. It can be taken as a word of caution to be careful to not be too rash or impulsive and it can also be taken as an encouragement to be spontaneous and I know that these two statements can sound very contradictory but let me explain. <laughs> so impulsivity comes from habit, old conditioning and sometimes avoidance Whereas spontaneity comes from creativity, it comes from your inner spark and most definitely your inner child and what, what lights you up makes you happy. So you see, they're very different. And so if you're wanting to take action, make sure that it comes from your creativity, if it fuels your passion and drive, if you feel that creative spark when you're wanting to take action and that's how you're going to know that, oh, this is my intuition guiding me, which is also spontaneous sometimes. And the cards also want you to anticipate a helper in the physical realm. This could be a man or woman, but certainly someone who carries this archetype of being a very resourceful, nurturing, uh, personality. So you can see the Queen of Pentacles carries her pentacle really close to her heart. She sits on this throne. She's very grounded and she represents resourcefulness, feeling like she has so much to give, so much willingness to nurture others around her as well. Um, her environment, her people, uh, her emotions, you know. It looks to me like you're going to be meeting somebody like this and you may already know this person, you may not, but this person who is very resourceful and nurturing is going to um, offer or just allow you to engage with them in some sort of collaboration, some sort of learning experience. You may be studying together, or this may person may be teaching you something, or you may be exchanging ideas, different perspectives and uh, ways of thinking. With all of that said, it's going to lead you to feeling more expansive and more determined and confident about your future, where you are moving towards. This could signify travel as well. You may be going overseas, going somewhere far away. You may be starting a new project, considering the possibilities or opportunities in starting one. So yeah, so it looks like you're going to be taking a lot of creative action towards expansive learning, um, immersion, study, collaboration, you got the freedom card from the oracle deck and I feel like that just makes so much more so much sense. The feeling of expansiveness in this card is freedom. It's 
the freedom to do whatever you want, feeling like you have permission to do whatever you want. And, you know, at the end of the day, aren't we all looking for that feeling? <laughs> you also got the message card. So maybe it is this resourceful person who is going to be sending you a message and by message, you know, this can be in its most subtlest forms, like maybe you're having a conversation with them and on the surface, it's about something else entirely, but when you pay attention to the pattern of the conversation and the symbolic meaning behind everything that you're talking about, that can be where you find your message. It can be a message from spirit. Um, so keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, <laughs> keep your ears perked, and uh, yeah, be open to receiving a message from spirit, from your intuition, but through these um, indirect forms. And you have baptism. So, you know, I think that goes very hand in hand with these two cards of starting out in this new phase of your journey, experiencing another awakening as you welcome more into your life. So, I think that's beautiful. Now, from the Work Your Light Oracle, you got Anna, Grandmother of Jesus, and it says, Seeding the Light, Laying Foundations, Divine Plan. When I get this card, I remind myself to not be too impatient, that I'm taking all those seemingly little steps, they're going to compound into very, um, big, decisive moments along my journey. So it may not look like much that you're currently doing, but it's going to lead to so much more. You're laying the foundations and this is all part of your divine plan. You have pillar of light. Your vibration is rising. You are the oracle. And that's what I get when I see this, you know, your vibration is rising. This is so much um, higher vibrational than where you currently may be. It is oh, so expansive <laughs> and it feels so good to be in that space where you can acknowledge the possibilities in life. Now last card, answer the call. So I'm going to leave you with this question. What is your soul calling you to do? What is your soul calling you to do? And go ahead, take that intuitive, maybe spontaneous action and tread forward build momentum and that is the end of your reading group one thank you so much for listening and I hope that it was helpful hope that it resonated let me know in the comments below if you picked group two clear chords then this reading is for you So we're going to first shuffle the deck, group two, group two. Okay, let's get started. So first we have the Wheel of Fortune and this card came out in reverse but I do want to note that it is the first card 
in your story, your spread. So the message that wants to come forward is that maybe you have been feeling somewhat out of luck and disheartened recently, may have felt to you that life has been against you and that nothing's going right, but that is about to change for you very soon. You're about to have a breakthrough and Spirit wants you to know that all of this has been happening in divine timing and honestly to me that is the deepest spiritual message of this card. It is that the wheel is always turning. Sometimes it turns up positively in your favor and sometimes it turns back down the other way around not in your favor, not what our egos want, but it is always turning and that is just a fact of life that we have the our ebbs and flows, the good and the bad, our highs and lows, and nothing can really prevent us from experiencing either or. And so this card, you know, when we get it, it's really asking you to surrender. Um, sure you can look forward to when it turns in your favor, but you also have to remember that it will also begin to turn and go back down the other way around. And so nothing's really going to make you as content and as peaceful as you want to be than if you were to surrender to this fact that you have to experience both. You know, so there's sort of two messages <laughs> in this card. So first, yes, your your luck is turning around and you're going to feel like the world is on your side very soon. But message number two, you have to remember that surrendering to the ebbs and flows is what truly makes you happy and content and satisfied in life. That is what's going to give you peace and that is also when you find the center to this wheel where you're unaffected by its turning. In other words, that is when you find your center where you're unaffected by your up and down emotions. And the reason why you're going to begin to feel so much more lucky soon is because you're going to be leaving behind a lot of burdens and old baggage. So the Eight of Cups, it's pretty self-explanatory looking at the image, right? This man is walking away from his Eight Cups of emotions and he's walking away because he realizes that there is more to life than what he's already had. He's walking away for pilgrimage to discover more to life, more to himself, and to deepen his connection to self and the world. The cuffs he's leaving behind, in your case, are burdens and traumas and baggage that has left you feeling weighed down, tense, rigid in the past. And this may be personal traumas that you uh, could not fully resolve up until now. It could also be ancestral trauma. And these are often you know, the emotions and sense of heaviness that is unexplainable until you really sit down <laughs> for hours sometimes to figure it out. Yeah, ancestral trauma can be quite a mystery until it makes sense. But all this card um, is trying to say is that yeah, you've been carrying a lot and you may not know 
why you've been carrying all of this, and that's okay. You're very close to the finish line, though. Very close to where you want to be. And you can let it go now. You can let it go, if not now, very soon. You can let go of your past. Let go of what's holding you back from embracing more and welcoming more into your life. You can let it go now. And in the process of letting go, it's not all going to be very pretty. The tower looks pretty scary, doesn't it? <laughs> Just look at the image here. These people jumped out of the tower because of an explosion, and they were not expecting the explosion, hence why they jumped out. And sometimes letting go of the past and our previous traumas and conditionings can feel like this. We don't realize the ways in which our traumas dictate our day-to-day -day habits. So this card is not a bad card at all. It's one of my favorite because it's a dismantling of old conditionings. It's a breaking down of limitations, of old barriers. We want this. As much as the ego hates it, because the ego is built on your limitations, and as much as your ego is going to feel like it's dying, remind yourself that you, who you really are, is not. <laughs> who you really are is perfectly fine. Who you really are and your awareness and your truth is going to survive this dismantling. And you know what's so amazing once you go through a tower moment is you have the most amazing epiphanies and breakthroughs and that is what you get next. You have the Ace of Wands, and the Ace of Wands is an epiphany and breakthrough in the form of action, in the form of creativity and passion. So once you let go and you allow the dismantling to unfold and break you down, you will rise from the ashes and reignite a deep, deep passion that you've always had but have forgotten somewhere along your journey. So you're going to feel this, this drive, this fuel um, arise, reignite, and you're going to want to take action and do something about it. And that's just so exciting. It's always good to be in that space of feeling inspired, feeling creative, and having the energy and passion to do something. And Spirit wants you to know that you have to You have to protect this inspiration, you have to protect this energy and impulse. Do not, do not dilute this feeling by asking for opinions or considering other options. Okay, you want to be laser focused on this one passion once it arises. The moment you start considering other people's opinions and right or wrong or what's more rational, you begin to lose um, you begin to lose out on the opportunity to really honor your intuition. So 
The reason why I'm saying this in accordance with the Seven of Cups is because the Seven of Cups is about indecision and not being able to choose because it seems to the mind that there are so many great options out there. Well, as much as it may seem that way at this level, there is really only one that stands out amongst the rest and in this card it is the uh, I think it is the cloaked angel <laughs> I think that's, that's my interpretation at least so despite there being so many options the card wants you to see that actually there is one that is spiritually more aligned than all the rest for this man and so as much as it may seem to your mind that there are so many options and possibilities out there for you which is true to your heart and your intuition there is only one that is really going to fulfill you and satisfy you and that is the the, uh, the creative passion that comes out of dismantling old beliefs and limitations so protect this energy once you receive it and nurture it because if you do you're going to be able to take on this embodied archetype of being a leader being someone capable and determined and passionate the king of wands is a very charismatic person he is so passionate and driven and full of energy and that's what makes him such a great leader and such an inspiration for everyone else around him and so you are being guided to begin to embody this person once you let go of the old and I think that's incredible <laughs> now I said the word inspiration a lot and it's funny because you got inspiration from Marcel's Oracle so follow your inspiration protect your inspiration and allow it to blossom into an embodied act at which point you become the inspiration and people get inspired by you oh another thing is inspiration comes from the heart doesn't it? You also have mentor so you may feel called to look for a mentor at a certain point along your journey and actually the king of wands can also symbolize that that you may be meeting someone who has this leadership quality about them who can be a mentor to you and guide you and help you Last but not least, you have decay and this is the dismantling of old conditioning, right? The letting go of the old that no longer serves you Allow the old to, de to decay You don't want to hold on to what is already dead From the Work Your Light deck, you have Warrior Woman and she says, have you answered your deepest calling? Have you answered your deepest calling? <laughs> Notice how she looks so charismatic and just like the king of wands this is the kind of spirit that you want to embody how can you step up to feel like a leader to embody what it's like to be a leader and share your light, share your passion 
Ooh, share your voice. There we go. It says, come out of the cave. Persecution, expression. Come out of the cave. Express yourself. Share your voice. Answer your deepest calling. And last but not least, we're going to end with this card. It says, no. Wait, postpone, pause, say no. And this may <laughs> feel sort of out of the blue because I've just said so many empowering things, but I believe that no can be very sacred. As much as yes can bring us opportunities, no can also bring you opportunities because it protects you from what you don't need, what you don't want, and it keeps you laser focused on exactly where you're going. So practice saying no to the things that you don't actually want, the things that you don't actually need. Don't lose your focus on what truly matters. No is a full sentence. Say no is a sacred practice. And so begin to become accustomed to that. Let that be your practice moving forward. All right, group two, that was your reading. I hope that it was helpful and that it resonated. Definitely let me know down in the comments. If you chose group three, then this reading is for you. So we're going to begin by shuffling the tarot deck, and pulling out some cards to build your current story, what you're currently going through, what you will be going through very soon, and any words of advice or caution from the spirit. Group three, black obsidian. Group three, black obsidian. Okay, so now we're going to start off with the first card that you got, and that is the five of wands. This card carries the energy of conflict and resistance which can often show up in arguments, um, in fighting, you know, it doesn't have to be physical fighting such as what this image depicts, but it can be sometimes passive aggressiveness or choosing to not see each other's um, perspectives and being overly defensive and yeah, um, being verbally um, aggressive and maybe even abusive. So we're starting off with this card which is telling me that maybe you have been getting into a lot more arguments than you may have wanted to. Nobody wants arguments. Um, maybe you have been experiencing conflict with a friend or family member and you're not kind of able to uh, see each other's sides or understand each other's perspectives currently. This can even be inner resistance between different parts of you. It often shows up between the ego and the shadow. You know, sometimes the ego wants something, um, but the shadow, for whatever reason is completely against it and when, when that happens you can feel this tug of war, this push and pull of I really want to, let's say for example, be a public speaker like that's what I want to do, that's when I know I will, I, I've made it and another part of you is just constantly holding you back from actually doing that. You just feel this resistance. Whenever you get on stage, you freeze up, you forget your lines, or you actually don't even want to practice. It's like another part of you is holding you back, preventing you from putting yourself out there and making the right preparations. 
that's just an example but you know this resistance inner resistance between ego and shadow can happen with just about anything in life um suffering is that feeling of being split between your inner selves so this can be happening amongst your outer relationships or it can be happening within or it can be happening in, at both levels and the problem here may be your over identification with the mind the king of swords is a very rational analytical and intelligent man he has so much clarity and uh, suave when it comes to the way he talks communicates and conveys his ideas but when he relies only on his mind and um, neglects the other aspects of him he can become rather um, close-minded and irrational actually and irrational masked as rationality and he can become very uh, cynical as well and refuses to see other people's perspectives and he becomes sort of like a tyrant in um, wanting things his way and wanting people to see things the way he sees it so as much as he is intelligent and a clear thinker he also has a shadow side where he can sometimes be way too rigid with his views and opinions and maybe that is what has been the issue recently and I think on some level you already know that it isn't serving you because you have the two of swords the two of swords is about indecisiveness and feeling conflicted between two um, choices two sides <laughs> views, opinions so maybe on some level you're already seeing and feeling doubt do I really believe this or should I consider the other side as well and I don't know I don't really know where I stand anymore and that murky space is a good place to be because it invites you to then be more introspective and look inwards if you look at this card first you can see that it's nighttime she's close to the water and there is moon above her all of this points to yin energy as opposed to yang it points to feminine yin energy which invites you to be more reclusive and turn inwards she even has a blindfold on to close her eyes and bring her senses inwards to observe with clarity what she's really experiencing on the inside and she has the two swords so you know this represents the two opinions that she's sort of torn between but she stands in the middle and she's going inwards to find peace between the two she's walking the middle path and that is why sometimes this card is about meditation whenever you turn inwards and turn to introspection to find clarity between um, the split psyche that is meditation so you're currently being encouraged to go inwards and really consider what you truly believe and um, understand to be true and when you do that you are allowing the world to turn in your favor you have the wheel of fortune and uh, the 
group one got this card as well and I explained the two meanings that often arise from this. Now one is the wheel is always turning and sometimes it turns in your favor. That is when you feel like you're in luck, you're fortunate. Sometimes the wheel turns um, against you, not in your favor. That's when you feel out of luck and like things are um, falling apart and the world's against you. But you see, this is just a fact of life that we have to go through the ebbs and flows, um, that we have to experience the highs and lows, and the wheel will keep turning. It'll never stop. So the second message is as much as luck is coming in for you, you're being encouraged to find the center of this wheel so that this turning doesn't have to affect you. In other words, find your center within so that your fluctuating emotions and thoughts don't have to affect you. Don't have to affect how you feel about yourself and how you see others. Where is that center? Find that center. Go inwards and find your center so you're not so easily influenced by your thoughts and by outer opinions. And once you find that center, you're naturally going to lay down your sword. The Four of Swords is about rest, regeneration, sometimes meditation also, but more in the form of resting the mind. So you're going to feel safe enough to lay down your sword and to finally relax within yourself. And that's beautiful. That's really regenerative. And yeah, the Four of Swords is just very healing all in all. And that is also a space where you can begin to practice manifestation work. When you find your center and what you're truly about, the external world begins to reflect that. And another thing is, the card invites you to feel gratitude and appreciation for all that you already have, um, for the overwhelming emotions that you're capable of feeling, to feel satisfaction and a sense of fulfillment. And that can be easily found, that, that sense of being can be easily found once you reconnect to your center. And in Tantra, we say your true center is your heart. So when you reconnect to your emotional body, your emotional brain, and when that happens, you're going to be able to engage in more collaborative um, experiences with others going to be able to share ideas more clearly, um, more decisively, and in a more kinder way. You're going to be able to expand and learn from and with others, which is just such a great place to be in. So I really look forward uh, to when you get here. Additionally, connecting with your center, your emotional body, you're also going to feel like this little boy. <laughs> this is the Page of Cups, and he's the archetype of uh, hope and faith and living with your heart on your sleeve, this renewed sense of innocence where you can acknowledge that you might get hurt, but regardless, you are open to feeling. That's what makes life worth it, to be able to feel, to be able to be connected to the heart. And he's someone who believes that dreams come true, you know. 
And so that's another aspect of this card that I want you to connect with because you also have the Nine of Cups, the Manifestation card. How can you be in this energy of believing? Believing is seeing, you know. And uh, how can you feel more gratitude and openness and hope in order to manifest the things in life that you want? Now, let's look at the oracle cards. You have revolutionary. So, it's beautiful that you are a thinker, a philosopher, and that you want to share your voice. When the king of swords is upright, he is the most intelligent um, philosopher out there. And to be able to clearly share your thoughts and voice in that sort of way is revolutionary. It's powerful. It is impactful. Just a matter of making sure that you're upright, right? That you're not slipping into rigidity because that's not revolutionary. <laughs> then you have freedom. And I would say freedom is being free of the ebbs and flows of this wheel. Freedom is being in the center of it all where you're unaffected. Where you're unaffected by your emotions and your thoughts. You're connected to your truth. Then you have message. Group one also got this as well. And what I want to tell you about this card is sometimes the real message that we should be listening for in someone else's um, words is what isn't being said. It's, you know, the things between the lines, the pattern from which they're speaking from, and the subtler symbolic meaning of what they are saying. So if you really want to communicate decisively or get your ideas across, read between the lines, um, pick up on patterns, because that is how spirit is communicating through um, the person or from you. We're communicating patterns and energy and symbols that resonate on a deeper level, that connect to emotions. It's never really the words that can be felt, you know? The words are very surface level and sometimes shallow, but the true message of any form of communication is what isn't being said and the subtler things that can be felt rather than heard. So this card is encouraging you to feel the message that is coming through. Now, we have some cards from the Work Your Light Oracle. First, we have Mirror. Who or what is triggering you? You can let this be your journal prompt if you like. It's always nice to have a clear idea of your triggers. And that can help you develop awareness to not act on your triggers and, and heal them. And then you have share your voice. Come out of the cave, persecution, expression. I feel like we've talked a lot about communication and using your voice today. So you are of course welcome to share your voice. Just make sure this expression is coming from you truly. Last but not least, you have get grounded. Empaths, highly sensitive, connect with nature. 
So get grounded, meaning don't be so stuck in your head. Come back to your body. Connect with your emotional body. And speak from the heart. Speak from a place that is more um, innate rather than the mind. So get grounded. That's going to help you. Connect to nature if you feel called to do that. Yeah, that is the end of your reading, group three. I hope that this was helpful. Really hope that it resonated. And you can let me know down in the comments below. It's always lovely to hear from you. And this is also the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. It's a pleasure having you here. And I wish you had a beautiful day or night, week, and month. See you very soon. Good night.